Hi and welcome to this guide on creating a uh, whitelist for your operating system and application files uh, on your workstations. First of all, you should uh, start your group uh, policy management uh, up and create a new uh, group policy in there for, uh, for these settings. Keep them in a separate uh, group policy, it, uh, it will work better when you, when you, uh, when you test it. Here you go and edit the, the settings under computer configuration, policies, windows settings, security settings, and down here in the application control policies and app locker. Uh, app locker is a uh, technology that was introduced in Windows 2008 R2 and the Windows 7 client. It only works on Windows 7 Enterprise and Windows 7 ultimate editions. It will not work on your ordinary professional edition. Now, when you're inside the uh, app locker configuration here, you um, need to be very careful. When you create these rules, you can very effectively block yourself out of, um, of, your, um, uh, of your machine. So, be very careful and test it on a very limited amount of machines. Um, in this case here you can see we are allowing all of the uh, all of the uh, applications from uh, from Microsoft that is applications signed by Microsoft and um, we don't ca really care what kind of applications they are or what version numbers they have all of them will be accepted and we have created one rule for that uh, as you can see here we'll also create a windows installer rule that will be the same it will be allowed for for the users on uh, on these machines to install all applications that uh, come and is signed by microsoft you need uh, it doesn't really matter what files uh, uh, this is just uh, some random uh, msi file i downloaded from microsoft uh, the important thing is yet that you just have a file where, where it's signed so you get this uh, certificate right uh, you, you can see here up in, in the top uh, where it's uh, Microsoft Corporation, Redmond, Washington and, and so on you would notice uh, wh when we did the executable rule that I just used a notepad at a reference it doesn't really, doesn't really matter what file it is um, just as long as the the uh, certificate on it is is correct. You'll notice here when when we uh, choose the uh, DLL file that um, I uh, in the first case actually takes a wrong DLL file that belongs to some of the uh, support software that's installed inside this uh, virtual uh, machine, uh, which is created by Parallels. So we'll choose uh, another DLL file that. Uh, is uh, a Microsoft DLL instead and we'll remove again as you can see here the pr product name file name etc it's not interesting we we just want all of the ones for Microsoft to run in this case Now when uh, these rules have uh, been created, um, you can see that um, when we go up here in the app locker and uh, configure the rules, um, you'll notice that uh, we are not enforcing the rules right now. We're just doing an audit. That, will, uh, that means that we will be able to see in the log file how Microsoft, uh, sorry, how Windows is reacting uh, to these rules and uh, it, it won't enforce them uh, per se but it will give, an, uh, give us uh, an indication if we have created the rules correctly and uh, what uh, won't work on these machines notice here that we also set the application identity service to run automatically that is very important because <laughs> this is a service that actually enforces these rules without it uh, it, it simply won't work so make sure that it is uh, running by default um, now we run a GP update to update the policy on uh, this uh, client and it should be updating in a second or two and after that we'll go to the uh, 
event log and uh, view if the rules have been implemented uh, as well. We'll also just see here how uh, the policies should be applied to uh, to the machine. You can see it under applied group policy objects. And here we have the event log, as uh, you can see. It just refreshes it, and you can see here how uh, the DLL files are allowed to run on the on the machine. Much of the uh, malware that uh, is in circulation now is distributed purely as uh, DLL files, so it's important that you also uh, check these DLLs if uh, if uh, you want to protect against uh, malware. Notice here how we can start Internet Explorer and we sh should be able to go back inside the log and uh, see if there should be a statement for it somewhere. This is probably one of the parallels uh, uh, DLL files that is not allowed to run at the moment. If this was a real production scenario we would of course investigate all of these uh, errors and be sure this is uh, Java, uh, as you saw, uh, and uh, allow them to run as well. You see here, definitely Internet Explorer was allowed. But even more important here, what is not allowed to run, for instance. Now, we're, we're only doing an audit, so uh, Adobe is allowed uh, at the moment, but uh, it should warn against it in the, in the event log. Let's see if we can find the entry that warns about that it would not have been allowed if, if uh, the rules were enforced. And there it is. Okay, so now we have verified that uh, the rules work. And um, of course you should do, do a much, much, much better testing when uh, it comes to your applications or your, your real production uh, system. But um, on this little virtual machine, it doesn't really matter. So we will enforce the rules now. Just to make sure that we can see some real effect here. So I'll press OK here on that. And then we go outside and run the GP update again. So now we shouldn't uh, be allowed to run the Adobe Reader, and as well as you can see, we are not allowed to. But Internet Explorer still works. So let's um, let's see here if uh, we can uh, if we can get uh, Adobe Reader to work as well. So we go into the executable rules and create a new rule. And we uh, need to find the exe files for uh, uh, for the Adobe program. Now we are going to allow Adobe Reader to to um, to work, and not all of the other uh, applications from Adobe. So we will not move the slide bar here as much as uh, the last time. So you can see it's only the Adobe Reader we are allowing. created. So let's run GP update again. Like that. And we should see the application starts without a problem. So here you have it. 
very easy way to implement uh, whitelisting and uh, well good luck